Welcome to the Do It All Dad Year podcast, and I am your host, Michael Kornbluth, and this is episode 15, Slacker or Wimp? That's the question, which paints my worst fears under intense Bill Hicks scrutiny all of a sudden. Now, why is this episode called Slacker or Whip? Last week, my seven-year-old daughter, Matilda, a female Flash, had her conference. It was a parent-teacher conference. She wasn't there. I was joined by my lovely wife. And my daughter got rave reviews. In fact, on her report card, Mrs. Farney, her teacher... On my daughter's report card, her teacher, Miss Farney, wrote, model student. And my daughter asked me, she says, Daddy, what's a model student? And I said, Matilda, in short, Miss Farney wants to clone more of you, like Lisa from Weird Science, plus chances are you're going to be way hotter than Mama, too. So my dad uh, resents uh, my daughter's fawning teacher reviews because he never had the pleasure of getting them from my teachers. I'll call up my dad and say, and I'll rub it in a little bit. I'll say, hey dad, uh, Miss Farney, uh, Matilda's kindergarten teacher, wants to clone more perfect students based on uh, your granddaughter. I took five years to graduate college. Lucky you. Thank God my learning disability wasn't genetic. So, I had the meeting with my teacher, and she says, for the first grade teacher core curriculum, she says that the curriculum requires our students uh, to read books which are half fictional and half informational. At the time, without missing a beat, I said, no problem, Farney, so we'll continue to not expose Matilda to fake news then. Teacher and my wife uh, laughed a long time. And that just proves the awesomeness of a great nonpartisan joke that we could all appreciate. Then again, if my wife wasn't that individual, we probably wouldn't still be together. So, uh, moving forward. Uh, Frank Sinatra is Robert Loja next to Elvis Presley. I strongly recommend the Elvis Presley documentary, The Searcher. I have newfound respect. One of my good friends growing up is mom. When I was a kid, you say that I look like Elvis Presley. And it always turned me on. She was definitely like the best looking. We didn't even have the expression MILF back then. We just had like golden age of porno. Where Mountain of Muff abounded in like every single old school film. Like Taste of Amber, Scandal of the Mansion, that sort of thing. I had a VHS tape in college that a friend had made for me. I know this sounds homoerotic, but he just like made these mixes. He made Simpsons VHS tapes and he made porno ones too. And this one he gave to me, very nice gift, uh, and obviously, and for some reason I brought it up to college, which was completely idiotic, because like when do you have time to like watch a porno by yourself, uh, unless you're like an RA, I, I definitely wasn't qualifying for that. So the point being, I just remember like showing it to people, I don't know why, like I have no understanding of like w what the like group interest was here, but... I just, I do remember for a fact these one people watching it, and then all of a sudden there were like 20 guys in one room, and I thought, okay, all right, so you you guys keep it. It was nice knowing you, Taste of Amber. Uh, we had a nice run, Gorilla Girls in the Mist, while it lasted. But uh, I guess that, my point being is that that was the strength to, it was a testament to the strength of that awesome porno uh, that was, porno mix that was created by uh, my. Good friend from back in the day. His name is uh, Koji Tong. He used to call himself uh, the Yellow Man. He's a Japanese American. I actually, would apart for him in my Heavy Metal High trilogy, where like his conflict is that you know he he doesn't want to, he doesn't even bother like learning English. And I mean he can speak some Japanese, even to say it's broken Japanese, being like very generous. And he was just obsessed with being that like Bart Simpson American you know rebel you know sort of character. Ended up playing football. I ended up going to school in Canada and you know reinvented himself. All of a sudden he started calling himself Cody. My name is Cody. And 
we, we had lots of adventures. Uh, in fact, I just had a conversation with a, a friend of a friend this weekend about Richard Bay, and he, Koji, got us tickets to see Richard Bay. Richard Bay. This is what we did senior year in high school. You know, we would take occasional runs to the Bronx to pick up uh, the sprayed weed that tastes like Windex, and we would. This is, of course, like second semester when we started slacking. I don't want to come across a complete slacker here. I had no intention to completely reminisce about the height of my slacker in senior year, but it seems very appropriate considering the topic of the podcast today, slacker or wimp. And so we saw Richard Bay. And Richard Bay was awesome. You know, he, he, was, he, he had a great voice for the medium. He looked good. And he was funny. He was basically a precursor to Jerry Springer. So this guy, Jimmy, who is married to my wife's close friend, Karen Valenti. You can't make these names up, folks. I, uh, Central Casting couldn't match this beautifulness in, as far as these earthy <laughs> New York names that they tried. But so they live in Rockaway Beach. Uh, they have two kids now. Uh, one together. And we spent the weekend with them. And this guy, Jimmy... Who used to work on demolition crews, blowing up freaking sheetrock. Now he works for Con Ed, does well. Great guy. And just now a, a proud new father. And it's very rare in this world where like a big headed Jew like myself, like we gotta like Jews get along well with Italian guys, but you know, for us to bond with the Italian guy, as far as enjoying an Andre the Giant documentary, and then to transition to like Elvis and watch a doc on that. And then to also talk about like Richard Bay and break down Star Wars films. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. So they say Andrew Dice Clay, you know, back in the day, you know, his name is Andrew Silverstein. And so we were, I was also talking Dice, you know, with Jimmy as well. And how I celebrated my birthday in Manhattan. Uh, I just turned 42. I want to thank my dear friend, uh, David Uger. So glad he's back in my life right now. We had an amazing time. Took him to the Strip House. It's a high-end steakhouse uh, in Manhattan. Uh, it's got this like sort of, you know, swanky, nineteen twenty sort of scarlet hue bordello feel. It's got these like beautiful like, stencilings of women in lacy, sexy lingerie dominant outfits from back in the day, where even all of the prostitutes look like high end uh, dames of uh, grand society. Uh, Charles Bukowski would have been a, would have been in heaven, obviously. So anyway, the point being is, I had a great meal there, but uh, beforehand, we were, why was I mentioning my birthday and how awesome Dave is? So we celebrated my birthday in Manhattan, had a great time, got lots of laughs. I don't recommend getting a tomahawk grass-fed ribeye for two. Way too much food. And if you're going to order medium rare, which is the way to order steak, make sure you specify medium rare. Especially when you're throwing down $135 in change. But we got a little carried away with like the shrimp cocktail and the uh, they have this uh, bacon bib salad, which is insane. Like talking like very thick, juicy, succulent pieces of bacon. Unbelievable. I mean, like I don't even need like a steak after this because... We're raising these kids pescatarian. I got three. So if I ever eat too much meat, it's just perpetual comments in the peanut gallery, which is essentially this for my daughter or my son. Yuck, 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 yuck. And that's what I received. So the deal was to raise the kids pescatarian, which is a combination of fish and vegetables. The The game plan was, when in the, I used to live in Park Soap with my wife fiance back then. She goes, listen, I don't really think it's like fair for me to abandon my relationship with Jesus Christ for you. I'm like, okay, well, as long as you promise to me that we can raise a kid to Jewish. And she goes, but we have to raise a pescatarian. And I said, deal. And we shook hands and that was that. So I like to call the pescatarian diet, the original super Jew Jesus diet, just to make my dad a little more tense than usual. So I uh, just want to thank, uh, my friend Dave, for being a very big supporter of this podcast and for giving me instrumental feedback and for actually going to an Apple store to figure out how to write a freaking review and really going above and beyond. And I really appreciate that. 
And I love anyone who my kids love. And they love Dave, and they were very excited to wake him up. He crashed my foot out of my office where I'm doing this podcast right now. So it's, uh, you know, college is, is a great thing. It's great when you can make friends post high school. I read this stat from this guy, Brendan Daly. He's a life coach. He does a lot of, he's now this political guy. He's running for uh, office down in Arizona. And very, very smart guy. And he is a very wise individual. And he threw this like crazy stat. I think the stat was that basically you remain f- friends with your friends from high school. I think there's like a negative two point percentage. Now, for me, I went to a very small high school. I've stayed in contact with a lot of these guys. You know, there's definitely a strong bond with a lot of them. You know, some of them were groomsmen. But I got to be honest, folks. You know, the people that I became friends with after high school, after I identified, after I established an identity of my own, are the people that I'm closest to to this day. The people that I, t- I talked to uh, on my birthday, really, like those big three. So I want to give my love to uh, Quincy, Evans, uh, Jason Lesner, and David Uecker. I love you guys for making my, my birthday extra special and for you guys continuing to uh, believe in me. So I mentioned the meeting, the teacher-parent conference meeting on behalf of my daughter, Matilda. And you have to understand, yeah, I've been a stay-at-home dad for the most part since she's been born while doing my best to restart the comedy career. When I was looking after Matilda, I hadn't even gotten my writing break yet which I eventually did get for VH1 Classic. So she's been there from the beginning. She's my biggest fan. So the fact that she's getting rave reviews is definitely reflects well on your host, Michael Kornbluth, host of the Doodle All Dad Your Podcast. Because I have played a hands-on role and obviously I've been blessed with the opportunity to spend more time molding her than others. So we were talking about perseverance. So that, that, that's one mark that they use in their uh teacher student evaluation and my daughter got an M in it which is like exceeding expectations so my daughter starts asking me about perseverance it's not a word that's really like tossed around all that much at that age I had no idea what perseverance meant you know when I was seven years old so my so my daughter says daddy what's perseverance data and I said what's perseverance uh, Jared Kushner getting Ivanka to convert to Orthodox Judaism which doesn't boast a rich history of female empowerment in its favor the last time I checked. What's perseverance? The uh, perseverance. Uh, perseverance, Matilda, is overcoming a stutter after cold calling IT directors for five months straight with no deals in sight. Being hung up on left and right. As if they could pick up on my overt, pushy Jewishness from a mile away and you would think that I was just calling... Uh, alt-right uh, startups uh, based in the uh, the Westwood, Southern California uh, territory. So this is my uh, Joe Paterno movie review on HBO. Paterno dropped the ball. Fucking Butterfingers. The end. So I was hanging out with my friend Dave. I know there's a reason I was mentioning before. So I was at this, uh, this diner. It's a cool diner. It's, it's local. Uh, it's right here in northern Westchester. And the waitress, so I finished eating my omelet, vegetarian little omelet, it was delicious. And I thank her. Uh, I, I said, uh, I didn't thank her, I, I gave her a review. I said, the, om- the, om- the omelet was very good. And the waitress said, I know. And then I said, you didn't know Trump was going to win and make ball busting great again. <laughs> Prior to that. Talking to my friend, and I said to my friend, Dave, let me dig up this like golden shower joke about Chelsea Handler. They haven't heard it's great. And then the waitress gets involved in our conversation, interrupt, interrupts us completely, and says, And I understand, prior I said, Hey Dave, let me like dig up this golden shower joke about Chelsea Handler. Without missing a beat, she zooms into her table, and the waitress says, Are you talking about idiot Trump? And then I say, How much are you worth exactly? With illegal donkeys being harder to smuggle in across the border than usual. Just curious. David Hogg looks like Roger's baby from American Dad after talking Andrew McCabe into a three-way with Buffy and her glow-in-the-dark strap on at Comic-Con. So, it was 4.20. Uh, it's obviously, we're three days past that. 
And this was a joke that I, I wrote in honor of 320. As everyone knows, it's basically the National uh, you know, Pothead Day. That, that's the code that cops uh, pencil in when you get arrested for possession of marijuana, from what I think, from what I remember. <laughs> so this is a reporter for High Times interviewing Ziggy Marley for their 420 issue. Your dad had 11 kids, but the crazy bald heads taught us ganja, put your life shooter out of commission. And Ziggy Marley replies, fake news, man. So yeah, so like I was saying, my daughter got nothing but stellar marks on her report card evaluation. So I tell my daughter, I said, Matilda, your teacher gave you all M's, which means consistently meeting expectations. But Matilda, I said, I'm most proud of you for getting an M for perseverance. And my daughter asked that question again, what's perseverance? And I said, doing what you have to do, even if it's only once a year on her birthday. So uh, another thing, this is, you want to talk about me feeling betrayed by the entire college-educated Jewish-American community. And I'll explain this right now. Six million hits later, six million hits later, I learned 420 is Hitler's birthday. What the F is up with that, huh? Blasting tough gong never felt so wrong. 420 is my new Yom Kippur. I starved myself from THC till sundown. I haven't felt this betrayed people since Sylvester Stallone snuck Mel Gibson into Expendables 3. Here we go. Typical elitist condescension. Here we go. You read. You have to know Trump is a moron, right? But Trump never had to change his kids' diapers because he was too busy hooking up his five kids up for life. So by this standard alone, he's five times smarter than me. Trump arms the Ukraine. Sex slave pushes days are numbered. Long Island is getting MS-13 deported. Savage Assad is put on notice. Trump destroys ISIS. His army does. We're about to denuclearize North Korea. So, Mom, do you still think Trump is a real piece of shit? So, this is me addressing my four year old son this weekend. Hey, Archo. It's my nickname for my son, Arthur. Hey, Archo. Remember when I told you Hillary's going to prison? Well, the wheels are in motion, kid. And all our FBI cronies are also going way downtown. Always knew the change was going to come. And then my son starts chanting, Trump, 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 Trump. <laughs> Beautiful moment. I shared that with Brendan Daly. He gave an immediate like. For eight years, you never heard, I love Obama. Who's offering up that information freely, like the post office, right? For eight years, from where I stand... I never heard, I love Obama. Comedy Central executives felt the same way when they re-signed Trevor Noah, indefinitely. So much for Jimmy Kimmel being angrier, funnier on his Buffalo Burger, hold the blue cheese diet. Mark my words, IG Inspector General Michael Horowitz is going to make Elliot Ness look like a Gen X slacker. In Revelation, Archangel Michael takes down the deep state devil for good. Deep state devil, Obama's demonic dream team, and the FBI and DOJ. What's the difference? Oh! Trump isn't as worth as much as he says. Fake news. Wrong. Trump's on money. Only real estate hacks from California. Don't know it. Wendy Wasserman Schultz. I thought everyone knew her as Wolfface Wasserman already. God didn't give me three kids to have a panic attack over it. Note to self while watching the Arthur Miller doc on HBO. Write something better than Death of a Salesman. I couldn't be this boring being interviewed if I tried. Arthur Miller never cold called through his 20s and beyond. Schmuck in the headset it is. That was actually the title for a spec script for Silicon Valley that I wrote. I sent this guy, he went to Ithaca, where I went to school, otherwise known as Cornell's retarded next door neighbor. So he 
but I was in the School of Communications, so I could take a bong hit of some exceptionally strong weed and not manage to stutter every other second. So point being is this guy actually wrote for the Simpsons comic books. He's written a gazillion of them. I don't know the exact number, but now he works in TV. Now he works for like Lucas Films. So he's very accomplished. So everyone's approaching this guy. Every schmuck in a headset. Every person that, does, that wants to be more than a schmuck in a headset. And eventually he read my script. And I really stayed on him. And he was very complimentary. He gave very honest feedback. You know, grammar was a little screwy. It's one of the reasons why I really like the, the, uh, the freedom of the podcast, you know, radio show. You don't have to, like, fuss as much. Uh, you know, more importantly, he's like, listen, you're funny and you got talent. He was pushing me to do the stand-up thing. Of course, you know, it's easy to say do stand-up, but when you got three kids at home and and when you're still so broke, your Hebrew name is on a judicial review, it's a lot more difficult to justify. Say, hey, babe, I'm going to take Metro North and I'm going to spend 50 bucks to, you know, try to entertain a bunch of millennial musketeer hipsters that are half my age so I can get discovered in Manhattan and, and go to more bringer shows where I invite an entire militia and get the light one minute in. Doesn't it sound great, babe? Do you want to relive that experience from my 30s now that I'm 42 and counting? So... That's basically how it works. Uh, Jimi Hendrix had to pay for stage time. But, so, I was talking about Wendy, Wolfface, Wasserman, and Schultz. Oh, yes. And I was talking about the uh, that, that Silicon Valley script that I did. Schmuck in a headset. That's why I, I, I went. Oh, so this is cool. So this is just a little message out there, folks. Is that So I, I created this character that was based on me because I worked as a recruiter forever. And I had the sequence where my dead father appears. My father's not dead. It's not as if I was like wishing for him to be dead, but I thought it'd be have a cool like ghost sequence. And so I played the brother of the early character on the show, who's the recruiter that works for a startup. And long story short, you're not in a spec script. You're not supposed to invent a character that dominates about, I would say, forty percent of like the storyline. And it wasn't about being egocentric. It was just a story that I had to write. So I've been having issues with my father, you know, back then everything was struggling with like identity, place, and society, all that stuff. Basically my lifelong quest to prove them more than just a schmuck in a headset. Because whenever you work in salespeople or recruitment, and if you have any sort of outside ambitions, I would keep it on the down low, okay? Because the rule is in corporate America is that you exist, and this is fine. You just gotta know the rules heading into it. I wish my father would have had this talk with me, but he was never in my situation. It's okay. You need like Bukowski said. In corporate America, they need to know that you exist for them and that you are that you are acting completely grateful and entitled for the privilege to make them as much money as humanly possible at your own personal expense in terms of time, health, doesn't make a difference. As long as your boss knows that you're there for them and that but the moment you start developing any sort of ego where you get the impression that you don't need them, or let's say you start growing a, uh, a, a little beard. Bad idea. You decide to completely overshadow your boss at karaoke. Bad idea. You decide to blatantly announce when your friends are asking what you're doing for lunch and you say that you're going to be doing writing at the coffee shop. Bad idea. Just no one wants to know about your other ambitions because then you come across just like every other person that has been deemed expendable because... Unless you take your job seriously as if your lifeline depends on it, then you're gone. So no punchlines there. Just a warning. Because no one likes to have to look for a job again and starting over. Although sometimes these are blessings. But point being, in corporate America, you have to be at one with the job, nothing more, nothing less. But if you're really committed, you wake up earlier in the morning uh, and you bang out some writing then, or you just don't mention the work and you find the time afterwards, which I found all the time when I was doing open mics. So you know, there's still hope out there <laughs> for the uh, the working artist. The uh, That's not just a flash in the pan YouTube internet personality. I, I assure you. So this is my third kid explanation. Had two under control, big sister, 
was the ideal fill-in for virtual grandparents on both sides of the fence. Then I knock out my wife in Buffalo for our first weekend away from the kids in five years. And God ends up punishing me for being too cocky. LeBron James is Obama with talent. Anthony Davis on the New Orleans Pelicans. Anthony Davis makes uh, Kevin Garnett look like Forrest Gump in braces. So this is a conversation with my daughter this weekend. Uh, my wife works nights, so she has to sleep in. And we're in a Katona. I said, hey, Matilda, should I get Mama's sandwich or don't bother? My daughter says, don't bother. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. So Mommy failed this love assessment test of flying colors. Matilda, I knew you were being generous last night when you said Mommy was only semi-angry with me. She's my biggest fan. I love her with all my hard times infinity. And she knows it. And she gives it back to me and then some. So we are in Katona at the library. This is my uh, this is big sister, Matilda. She's running past her little brother, Archer USA. And Archer, who gets very competitive with her, freaked out. And he says, don't run faster than me. And then I turned to this, uh, this older, uh, elderly-like stranger. And I said, my son doesn't subscribe to the ladies' first theory just yet. <laughs> yeah. Get a nice laugh out of her. So I had another uh, teacher uh, conference uh, on the behalf of my son today. He's been taking speech courses. I'm uh, very grateful for all of this complimentary free assistance, Twitter assistance, that my, my son's been receiving. It's been like a true gift from God. It's like, who needs Norway? And, you know, very bright kid, but he needed help with, with his speech, his enunciating. So this is an annual review of sorts. And at one point... I made some self-deprecating comment about uh, my children helping me uh, overcome my learning disability. And I mentioned taking the SATs untimed. And then this older Jewish gal administrator said, did you really take the SATs untimed? And I said, I did. By the time I finished, my friends would decline their major sophomore year in college. <laughs> and I got a laugh. I love recycling. I love recycling old material, folks. It's a beautiful thing. So the other day, my, my daughter asked me, she goes, Dad, Dad, what's true love? And I said, when the thought of pouncing your affections on anyone else makes you sick in your stomach. And that's why I put up with the Knicks only winning one playoff series in the past 20 years and counting. Watching these NBA playoff games, folks, very frustrating for a lifelong Knicks fan. Also very hard for me to get emotionally engaged in. And I realized it's because the Knicks are my first love. It's that forced marriage that my father pushed on me. And obviously at this rate, I'll never have a ring to show for it. But regardless of it being a forced marriage or not, they're my first love. Eddie Murphy's parents ended up falling in love. That was a forced marriage in coming to America. So arranged marriages could work. I don't endorse it. Just to be clear. But... It just shocks me. I mean, they provided me nothing but like massive suffering and disappointment for ages. And the idea of jumping on any other team and having any sort of wandering eye like grosses me out to the core. If that's true love, I don't know what is. I really don't. So uh, this is yesterday. I'm with my kids. My, my, my wife, we were in Queens because uh, we were staying at a friend's place and then she had to go to this Bridal shower party in Long Island, Yenta country as I like to call it. So she had a really a nightmare coming back home to Westchester. So I'm hanging out with the kids. And I said, uh, Mama hasn't texted yet, so that means Mama doesn't love you anymore. <laughs> Matilda, is that funny? Yeah, Dad, it's funny. I know, it's going to get some retweets, Daddy. No, she's actually not that negative. She encourages my creative uh, proliferation. So we're coming back from Long Island, and my daughter says, Dada, why did the ways switch to a man's voice? And I said, because she identifies as a he, like a female rugby player at Rutgers. <laughs> Dada, she gave me such a hard time. Dada, why did the ways switch to a man's voice? Calm down. It's not even close to bitch bossy mama mode, Matilda. Dada, why did the ways switch to a man's voice? I wish I said... We could change the voice setting for Donald Trump on your right is Mohican son, 
Elizabeth Warren's home away from home. So I was talk I mentioned Trump a little bit before. So the Queen of England, I made sure Obama wasn't invited to the uh, royal wedding over Trump because his sidekick, uh, Sadiq Khan, who Obama calls Mini Me, will be in attendance to represent, 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 represent. In Queens, I was representing with my uh, KP, my new KP uh, tank top, underneath my uh, turquoise blue Tommy Bahama shirt. I'm sounding like a full-blown fairy right now, but I just wanted to basically establish my hardcore New York Nick cred as much as humanly possible, because I would love it if some do-it-all dad hardcore Nick fans can participate, and we could talk about whether that would be a great episode right there, as far as whether pushing Nicks onto their children is the moral, uh, humane uh, decision to do, after all. <laughs> I'll have to work on that, but I think there's definitely comedic goal at the end of that rainbow. So I'm talking to my wife's friend, and her parents were there, which was a little bit annoying. I was not expecting to hang out with them, but it turns out they, they closed... They just sold the house in Brooklyn to move into Florida. And they just came back, taking their granddaughter on a cruise. And I found out that this, this kid's been on more cruises than me. The kid's been on at least six cruises so far, which got me very aggravated. And I said, so babe, so I said this in the car, I cannot bite my lip. I said, so babe, so your parents ado adopting a rescue dog out of the blue, <laughs> uh, as in adopting a rescue dog as of two months ago. So, babe, your parents ado adopted. Da, 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 da. So, babe, your parents adopting a rescue dog means your parents will never take our three kids on cruises ever. And, well, and then my wife says, so you're going to write an angry blog about it? Actually, I was thinking more big picture, like divorcing you and remarrying to snag more giving grandparents. <laughs> Hardcore joke. It's a funny premise. It actually occurred to me at the time. And I'm glad I was able to get some mileage out of it right now. Obviously, I'm not serious. But very funny nonetheless. So, this is my daughter for you. So, there's this beer freezer at this like mobile gas station that's close by. And we actually had some springtime weather. So, I figure I got a couple of, you know, tall boys. No big deal. It's not like I'm drinking booze over here. And... So we're in the beer freezer, and my daughter recognizes this one six-pack of this beer. It's a great IPA called Flower Power. I think she remembers it because I said that we tried to get a, a keg for it for our wedding. We have very honest conversations. So she understands that beer is not going to be forever. So anyway, so we're in the beer freezer, and my daughter says, Daddy, get Flower Power. And I said, I love your unbridled enthusiasm on Dada's behalf. It's a beautiful thing. So later that night, my daughter states her extreme distaste for Axis Bold of Love by Jimi Hendrix and the experience for each side. For each side, my daughter says, I hate this record. She said, I hate this record the way Frank Sinatra would yell, turn down that acid rock to his Palm Springs neighbor, Sonny Bono. So my daughter... Uh, I showed her the tail end of Ford Fairlane because I like to show them shots of California before it turns into a complete hellhole. And it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, again, if I were to cite my comedic influences growing up, it was Rodney and Dice, nothing more, nothing less. And Living Color was great. Simpsons, obviously. So my daughter uh, quotes Dice from Ford, from Ford Fairlane. My daughter quotes Dice from Ford Fairlane and says, My hair! <laughs> From there, I propose. Matilda, will you marry me? Don't say yes. Yes! Never tell mommy this happens. Or rubbing the fact you could fit into any skinny jean imaginable forever. Babies or not. <laughs> this is Michael Kornbluth, your host for the Do It All Dad Year podcast. Dad Friendly Entertainment for you and me. Matilda Rose Kornbluth. I plan to prove to you that daddy uh, is no slacker and daddy is no slacker because I was that individual who did overcome his debilitating stutter 
from cold calling IT directors twice my age for five months at a time with no deals in sight, where I literally would shed tears that I had to compress inside me in the bathroom stall afterwards because I was hung up left and right and actually had a New York condescending ego heading into it thinking that I would conquer the world of cold calling. Where this level of autonomy came, I have no idea. I mean, I'm assuming I just like picked it up from like my dad, hey, through like pure osmosis, but like he certainly never gave me the confidence to totally destroy cold calling. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but daddy got through it. And what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So it makes this daddy very proud knowing that your teacher a motor about all your natural gifts, about you working great with others, you being super sweet, you being curious, you wanting to figure out stuff on your own. But for her to emphasize perseverance, and I always tell you, you know, Kobe Bryant, Larry Bird, you know, the Seinfelds of the world, yes, all the people of incredible talent, but it's their work ethic that truly separate them from the pack. Howard Stern, you know, these guys live for their work, and where there's passion, and where you could marriage that, Matilda, with whatever your natural gifts are, that's where the opportunity for greatness exists. And I know that you will achieve greatness when you are able in life, and I'm talking greatness in terms of career, you're going to be able to find that greatness, you're going to be able to find that perfect marriage of passion and your natural gifts. And for you, you could do anything. Like I said, God gave you smarts, humor, heart, beauty, incredible athleticism. You could read emotions. So you were a born leader. I've always said God gave you the universe. So don't be an a-hole about it. You know, always stick up for the people less fortunate. And you could be a female rabbi by the time you're like 18 and then from there use it as a platform to launch your uh, singing career I feel like you could wear a gazillion hats in this universe and you make daddy a better person I love the way you look at me now and I want that to remain forever but I do want that look to like deepen with even more excitement when daddy finally was able to deliver you some of the you know finer things in life you know such as that bigger home but more importantly I really want to have that cool radio show that you could visit me and eventually I can have you participate and we can create comedy magic together uh, once a blue moon and I think that'd be an excellent uh, career day uh, story to tell uh, down the line uh, love you with all my hard times infinity this is the do it all dad your podcast Dad-friendly entertainment for you and me. Talk to you soon.